Okay, let's talk about Helen Blavatsky again. In her book, Isis Unveiled, not only did she discuss many of the things that she was studying, but she exposed the Jesuits and the Catholic Church. Now, before I get into what she said, let's talk a little bit about the Society of Jesus or the Jesuits. And it was created by Ignatius of Loyola. And it's all a, a male priest religious congregation of the Catholic Church. Now the Society of Jesus has members that are called Jesuits. And this society is engaged in evangelization and ministries in 112 nations and six continents. Now the Jesuits work in education, intellectual research, and cultural pursuits. They also have retreats, ministers in hospitals and parishes, and promote social justice and economical dialogue. It is claimed that Ignatius Loyola founded the society after being wounded in battle and experiencing a religious conversion. Ignatius was a nobleman and he had a military background and the members of the society were supposed to accept orders anywhere in the world where they might be required to live in extreme conditions. Jesuits are thus sometimes referred to as God's soldiers or God's Marines or the company. Now, the Society of Jesus is consecrated under the patronage of Madonna della Strada, a title of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and it is led by a su superior general. The headquarters of the Society is, is in Rome. Okay, so that gives you a little idea of what the Society of Jesus or the Jesuits are. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Catholic Church, known as the Roman Catholic Church, the largest Christian church in the world, with over 1.27 billion members. You know that the priests are not allowed to get married, but they encourage their members to have as many children as possible. And it is led by the Pope. Okay, and uh, this church is basically um, following its doctrine that it is the one true church, the, the universal, universal sacrament of salvation for the human race and the one and only true religion. According to the Catechism, the Catholic Church is further described in the Nicene Creed as the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. These are known as the four marks of the church, and they teach that their founder is Jesus Christ. Although they'll say that they built it on the uh, rock of St. Peter. I was raised Catholic, so I know a little bit about it. Generally, the churches are um, very beautiful. They, um, as I've talked about in my other videos, the altar is just a, a form of the Kabbalah model with Jesus Christ in the middle. And they tend to have a lot of stained glass windows depicting the doctrine uh, of, the, of the religion, of Jesus Christ, his, his crucifixion, of the apostles and the life of Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary, his mother. But as I've talked about in other videos, I believe that Virgin Mary is probably not the woman who gave birth to the man known as Jesus Christ. I do believe that man 
who was Jesus Christ, was Pharaonic. He was a Nazarene, which was a special kind of follower of God, if you will. They grew their hair out long. Uh, the, the rules for them were different. They were supposed to abstain from alcohol and stay away from dead bodies. Now, um, Jesus Christ was uh, the, supposed to be the Son of God, the begotten Son of God, which is the same title that they gave to Dionysus, and you'll see that uh, revealed in Helen's writings here in a moment. But um, the Catholic Church has claimed a lot of miracles and so on. However, this Catholic Church has a very dark past, and when they started out, the priests were allowed to be married until about the year 1000, and then things changed. They um, got involved with the Crusades, and a lot of people in Europe and around the world were forced into this religion under the pain of torture and death. And uh, that went on for quite a while. Now, there's a lot of anti-Catholic uh, movements out there and sentiments, but... Um, in my opinion, it's just another form of this cronide cult, just as the religions in Mesoamerica of the Aztecs and the Mayans and the Incans were, and they were doing human sacrifice and cannibalism as well, but it was just a different flavor of the cult, just as the Jews have their flavor of it and the Muslims have their flavor of it, and the Satanists have their flavor of it, and so on and so on. But nobody's telling the, the truth. So let's talk about what Helen talked about in her writings. So I pulled up some copies of some of the books in her, or some of the pages in her Isis Unveiled. And in it, she talks about the Gnostics. Now, Keep in mind that that Helen died in the in the late 1800s. So this was before the Nag Hammadi Library was discovered and um, disseminated to the public. But she knew quite a bit about the Gnostics and some of their terminology. Now, here's what she wrote about what the the church did. It says, "quote." They persecuted the Gnostics, murdered the philosophers, and burned the Kabbalists and the Masons. And when the day of the great reckoning arrives and the light shines in darkness, what will they have to offer in the place of the departed expired religion? What will they answer, these pretended monotheists, these worshippers and pseudo-servants of the one living God to their creator? How will they account for the Megalistar, the supreme great master of the Rosicrucians, the first of the Masons, for he is the builder and architect of the temple of the universe. He is the Verbum Sapiente. Everyone, know, uh, everyone knows, wrote the great Man, uh, Manichian of the third century, Faust, that the Evangeliums were written neither by Jesus Christ nor his apostles, but long after their time by some unknown persons, who judging well that they would hardly be believed when telling of the things they had not seen themselves, headed their narratives with the names of the apostles or the disciples contemp uh, contemporaneous with the later." End quote. Okay, so she knew uh, quite a bit about the Gnostics. She talked about them and uh, talked about what this church did to them. You know, most of them were burnt. Okay, another quote from Helen's book, and this is interesting, is, quote, This is all in history and cannot be easily denied. Magic, in all of its aspects, was widely and nearly openly practiced by the clergy till the Reformation. The famous John Rucklin, author of 
Marific wor Word and friend of Pico de Mirandola, the teacher and instructor of Erasmus Luther, and Melanchthon was a Kabbalist and a cultist, end quote. So Helen did a lot of studying on magicians and conjurers. She uh, studied um, Houdin. Now, Houdin was a French magician, and he was famous in her time, but it, it, his work was done mostly by sleight of hand, and he was uh, very popular. And the famous Harry Houdini, who was a Jew who changed his name, um, changed his name in honor of Mr. Houdin um, because he was that impressive to him, were just magicians who used tricks through sleight of hand. And by the way, Harry Houdini uh, was born Eric Weiss. And like I said, he changed his name and named himself after Jean Eugene Robert Houdin, the famous French magician. But these men were good with the sleight of hand. And Helen uh, talked about that quite a bit in her books, but she also talked about sorcerers who used, if you believe it or not, the, the help of elementals. And elementals are spirit beings that are not or were not human. That would probably be called your demons or elemental spirits, nature spirits, by the church today. So she studied quite a bit of this, so I, I think she knew what she was talking about. And the Catholic Church, just from some of my studies and the, what I would, you know, experienced as a child being brought up in it, uh, definitely has had a lot of changes. And like I said, they used to allow the priests to get married and that went up to about a thousand years ago. But, you know, now we know all the scandals with, with the pedophilia or the, these priests having affairs. And it was no different where, where the church I went to, the previous priest was said to have had an affair with a woman and funneled her money. And the, the current priest, when I was there, was said to have been sent to this remote rural area that I grew up in because, as a punishment for... Uh, may have had an affair. You know, these were the rumors going around. They should just let them get married and tell the truth about what their church is and, and all that. But she, uh, here again, Helen Blavatsky was revealing and exposing the, the Catholic Church and, and the Jesuits, as we'll see. So let's take a look at what else she wrote. Okay. Now, she wrote that, quote, the literary resources of the Vatican and other Catholic repositories of learning must have been freely placed at the disposal of these modern authors. When one has such treasures at hand, original manuscripts, Peppery and books pillaged from the richest heathen libraries, old tre treaties on magic and alchemy, and records of all the trials for witchcraft and sentences for the same to, t to rack, stake, and torture. It is mighty easy to write volumes of accusations against the devil. We affirm on good grounds that these, that there are hundreds of of the most valuable works on the occult sciences, which are sentenced to eternal concealment from the public, but are attentively read and studied by the privileged who have access to the Vatican Library. The laws of nature are the same for heathen sorcerer as for Catholic saint, and a miracle may be produced as well by one as by the other without the slightest intervention of God or the devil. Now, isn't that interesting? She, in the 1800s, was exposing the, the Catholic priest that they were reading occultic manuals and practicing magic. And that Inquisition 
was still going on in the 1800s. Uh, they, you know, it wasn't as frightening then. It was on its way out, but I think she still, you know, took a pretty good chance at the stuff that she was writing that, uh, you know, something could have happened to her. Okay, so let's uh, continue on now with what else she wrote in her book. Okay, again, Helen Blavatsky in Isis Unveiled writes, quote, This is all in history and cannot be easily denied. Magic in all its aspects was widely and nearly openly practiced by the clergy till the Reformation, as I said, end quote, uh, as I said, she, this is what she wrote before. Um, so let's take another look at what else she wrote. Okay, again, in Isis Unveiled, she started to talk about what they did during the Inquisition. And this is something new that I didn't know about. And to put it bluntly, they were burning babies and children as witches. Now, I knew that they burnt mostly women, the European women, and some men, and lots of torture, but I had no idea until I read this they were, that they were killing babies and children accused of witchcraft. And they were doing this all over Europe and in Germany especially. So let me read what she wrote. Quote, Under the Christian standard, in the brief space of 14 years, Thomas D. Torquemada, the confessor of Queen Isabella, burned over 10,000 persons and sentenced to the torture, 80,000 more. Orobio, the well-known writer, or Orobio, the well-known writer who was detained so long in prison and who hardly escaped the flames of the Inquisition, immortalized this institution in his works when he, when once at liberty in Holland. He found no better argument against the Holy Church than to embrace the Judaic faith and submit even to circumcision. In the Cathedral of Saragossa, says a writer on the Inquisition, is the tomb of a famous inquisitor. Six pillars surround the tomb. To each is chained a moor as preparatory to being burned, end quote. Let's continue and see what she wrote. Again, Ms. Blavatsky writes in her Isis Unveiled, the crafty work of the Jesuits is seen at every page of the bloody tragedies, and it is in Bamberg and Würzburg where these worthy sons of Loyola were most powerful at that time, that the cases of witchcraft were most numerous, end quote. So they were in Germany, as usual, wouldn't leave them alone. Let's continue and see what she wrote. Regretting that space should prevent our giving one of the most curious lists of the world of burned witches, we will nevertheless make a few extracts from the original record as printed in Haber's Bibliotheca Magica. One glance at this horrible catalog of murders in Christ's name is sufficient to discover that out of 162 persons burned, more than one half of them are designated as strangers, i.e. Protestants, in the hospitable town, and the other half we find 34 children, the oldest of whom was 14, the youngest an infant child of Dr. Schutz. To make the catalog shorter, we will present at each of the 29 burnings, but the most remarkable. In the first burning, four persons, Old Anchor's widow, the wife of Lieber, the wife of Gudbrot, the wife of Hawker. In the second burning, four persons, two strange women, the old wife of Butler. In the third burning, five persons, 
Tongue Sleever, a minstrel, four wives of citizens. In the fourth burning, five persons, a strange man. In the fifth burning, nine persons, Lutz, an eminent shopkeeper, the wife of Banak, a senator. In the sixth burning, six persons, the fat tailor's wife, a strange man, a strange woman. In the seventh burning, seven persons, a strange girl, 12 years old, a strange man, a strange woman, a strange bailiff, three strange women. In the eighth burning, seven persons, Banuk, a senator, the fattest citizen in Würzburg, two strange women. In the ninth burning, five persons, a strange man, a mother and a daughter. In the tenth burning, three persons, Steinacher, a very rich man, a strange man, a strange woman. In the eleventh burning, four persons, two men and two, two, two women. In the twelfth burning, two persons, two strange women. In the thirteenth burning, four persons, a little girl, nine or ten years old, a younger girl, her little sister. In the fourteenth burning, two persons, the mother of the two little girls before mentioned, a girl, twenty-four years old. In the 15th burning, two persons, a boy 12 years of age in the first school, a woman. In the 16th burning, six persons, a boy of 10 years of age. In the 17th burning, four persons, a boy 11 years old, a mother and a daughter. In the 18th burning, six persons, two boys 12 years old. The daughter of Dr. Junge, a girl of 15 years of age, a strange woman. In the 19th burning, six persons, a boy of 10 years of age, another boy 12 years old. In the 20th burning, six persons, Gobel's child, the most beautiful girl in Würzburg. Two boys, each 12 years old, Stepper's little daughter. In the 21st burning, six persons, a boy 14 years old, the little son of Senator Stolzenberger, two alumni. In the 22nd burning, six persons, Sturman, a rich cooper, a strange boy. In the 23rd burning, nine persons, David Crotin's boy, 19 years old. The two sons of the Princess Cook, one 14 and the other 10 years old. In the 24th burning, seven persons, two boys in the hospital, a rich cooper. In the 25th burning, six persons, a strange boy. In the 26th burning, seven persons. Weidenbusch, a senator. The little daughter of Valkenberger. The little son of the town council bailiff. In the 27th burning, seven persons. A strange boy. A strange woman. Another boy. In the 28th burning, six persons. The infant daughter of Dr. Schutz. A blind girl. In the 29th burning, seven persons. The fat noble lady. Edelfrau, and a doctor of divinity. Summary. Strange men and women who are Protestant, they are Protestants, 28. Citizens, apparently all wealthy, 100. Boys, girls, and little children, 34. In 19 months, they burnt 162 men, women, and children, and, and including a baby. They were, says Wright, little girls of from 7 to 10 years of age among the witches. And 7 and 20 of them were convicted and burnt. At some of the, of the other brand or burnings, the numbers brought to trial in these terrible proceedings were so great and they were treated with so little consideration that it was usual not even to take the trouble of setting down their names. But they were cited as the accused number 1, number 2, number 3, and so on. The Jesuits took their confessions in private. What room is there in theology which exacts such holocaust as these to appease the bloody appetites of its priests for the following gentle words? Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Even so, it is not the will of your father that one of these little ones should perish, but who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. We sincerely hope that the above words have proved no vain threat to these child burners. 
Did the butchery in the name of their Moloch god prevent these treasure hunters from resorting to the black arts themselves? Not in the least, for in no class were such consulters of familiar spirits more numerous than among the clergy during the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. True, there were some Catholic priests among the victims, but though these were generally accused of having been led into practices too dreadful to be described, it was not so. In the 29 burnings above cataloged, we find the names of 12 vikers, four canons, and two doctors of divinity burnt alive. But we have only to turn to such works as were published at the time to assure ourselves that each po popish priest executed was accused of damnable heresy, i.e. a tendency to re reformation, a crime mo more heinous far than sorcery. End quote. So for the alleged Satanist, that Helen Blavatsky has been labeled as, she's anything but. She just exposed the Catholic Church b before even people today exposed it. And she doesn't get any credit for that. She exposed them as practicing sorcery, conjuring demons and spirits, playing around with the occult, because they had all of the writings, and for just murdering men, women, children, and babies. So do they even have a right to talk about anything moral today? So let's continue on with what Miss Blavatsky wrote in her books. With this ISIS unveiled, let's continue on. Okay, Helen Blavatsky wrote, quote, The motive of Jesus was evidently like that of Guatemala Buddha, to benefit humanity at large by producing a religious reform which should give it, it a religion of pure ethics, the true knowledge of God and nature, having remained until then solely in the hands of the esoteric sects and their adepts. As Jesus used oil and the Essenes never used aught but pure water, he cannot be called a strict Essene. On the other hand, the Essenes were also set apart. They were healers, Isaiah, and dwelt in the desert, as all ascetics did, end quote. Now, how did she know about the Essenes when she died before that Nag Hammadi library was discovered and disseminated to the public? You see, they have all of these texts all around the world in secret little libraries that you in the public are not aware of. And it's also interesting to me that Edgar Cayce also knew quite a bit about it, which makes me wonder if he was reading some of her works because he, was, he came after her. So let's continue on. She writes, quote, their friendly relations had certainly led them at a later period to adopt the Adonaya, or the sacred rites over the body of the lamented Adonis, as we find Jerome fairly lamenting this circumstance. Over Bethlehem, he says, the grove of Tammuz, that is of Adonis, was casting its shadow, and the grotto where formerly the infant Jesus cried, the lover of Venus was being mourned, end quote. So she knew that the Adonai that the Freemasons talk about is Dionysus, Osiris, Tammuz. They call him Adonis. There was also a different Adonis in mythology who was killed uh, by Artemis. But in this case, when you hear them talking about Ad Adonai is also God and so is Lucifer. Well, Adonai is Dionysus, Osiris, Lucifer is Prometheus. So again, these, you know, uh, probably up at the top and these learned elders know exactly what went on and Helen Blavatsky was just beginning to reveal it to the public. So she gets the defamation today uh, by these uh, people online who really have no clue about what they're talking about, probably never even read her books and just repeat what somebody else uh, created in a video. So let's continue on and see what she wrote. Quote, 
At the beginning of the 4th century, crowds began gathering at the door of the academy where the learned and unfortunate Hypatia expounded the doctrines of the divine Plato and Platonius and thereby impeded the progress of Christian proselytism. She too successfully dispelled the mist hanging over the religious mysteries invented by the fathers, not to be considered dangerous. This alone would have been sufficient to imperil both herself and her followers. It is precisely the teachings of the pagan philosopher which had been so freely borrowed by the Christians to give a finishing touch to the otherwise incomprehensible scheme that had seduced so many into joining the new religion. And now the platonic light began shining so inconveniently bright upon the pious patchwork as to allow every one of uh, one to see whence the revealed doctrines were derived, end quote. Okay, so Hapesha, who was just disgustingly kidnapped and murdered by being cut to death with shells after they ripped off her clothes by Christian monks, knew even back then that these Christians were deriving their religion from paganism, and she exposed it, and they didn't like that, so they killed her in a most disgusting manner. So are you starting to get the, the, the understanding of, of the prison that you're in and how they keep you and, and the rest of the public in ignorance and hoard all the books and play around with these little occult rituals in their little churches and temples and their uh, mosques and everything else? Okay, let's read a little bit more what she wrote. Quote, how little the philosophy of old secret doctrine was understood is illustrated in the atrocious persecutions of the Templars by the church and in the acquisition of their worshiping the devil under the shape of the goat, Baphomet. Without going into the old Masonic mysteries, there is not a mason of those, we mean, who do know something but has an idea of the true relation that Baphomet bore to Azazel, the scapegoat of the wilderness, whose character and meaning are purely perverted in the Christian translations, end quote. So we don't even know, you know, what this Baphomet was. We know that Anton LaVey, the, the Chicago Jew, Howard Levy, who created the Church of Satan, claimed that symbol for his church, and if you go to that page, um, they'll talk about Satan being a modern-day Prometheus, whereas Michael Aquino, the creator of the Temple of Set, who was an offshoot, refers to Satan as Set as well. Now let me read one more thing here from Isis Unveiled. True to the exclamation of David, paraphrased in King James's version as all the gods of the nations are idols i.e devils bacchus or the firstborn or the orphic theogony the monogenes or only begotten of the father zeus and cory was transformed with the rest of the ancient myths into a devil by such a degradation the fathers whose pious zeal could only be surpassed by their ignorance have unwittingly unwittingly furnished evidence against themselves they have with their own hands paved the way for many a future solution and greatly helped modern students of the science of religions. End quote. Okay, so she was exposing everything in, in her books. Isis Unveiled. She didn't come up to, to the level that my work is. Again, I'm not being arrogant because she didn't have access to the Loeb Library and so maybe some of the books out of the British Library. It wasn't ready yet. But she really, if you read this book, these books, and she has a lot of meat to it, she was really, really getting close to the proof that the god of this Abra Abrahamic cult is Zeus and elements of Cronus and, and Dionysus worship and Ashtoreth worship, and they just changed everything around. They stole all of the occultic uh, writings, uh, demonized everybody's religion, 
and they use incredibly disgusting violence to force everybody into their religion. Now, the, the Jews use violence. Uh, most of their holidays are about who they killed, what group of people they killed or sw you know swindled. Look at every one of their holidays and what they really mean. You know, Hanukkah's when they battled the Greeks. So, you know, take a look at it. Take a look at every one of their holidays and what they are. The Catholics just went in, grabbed your men, women, children, and babies, called them witches and sorcerers, and just tortured them filthily, disgustingly, burnt them, and terrorized everybody in Europe and everywhere they went. And their little Jesuits that had been kicked out of many countries just like the Jews have, still are around and they're in everybody's business and their their pursuit is to study things i mean why you're a priest why do these stupid catholics have a, a telescope and, a, and an observatory you know this is just the nonsense and and they have to be taken down and, and the muslims too you know you're just an offshoot of this and you terrorize people, and you'll argue, you may argue with me, but you do. You cut people's heads off. You think you have rights to rape children and take, you know, slaves. That's rape. You're just coming in and forcing your your version of the cult on everybody else. And same thing with you Satanists. You're the same thing. Same thing with you Mormons. And none of you have told the truth about the origin of your religion, your cult. And you, none of you have been taken a task for running the slave trade, for the murders and tortures you've done, for the deception, the fraud, and so on. And you do need to be taken a task. It's same thing with you Freemasons. I have no respect for any of you Freemasons. None. In today's world, with, with the way that you have control of media and everything else, for you not to even come out and, and even tell this stuff is, is, is a crime. You're just as guilty, if not more, because you knew better and you did nothing about it. So... Here we have what what Helen Blavatsky, the alleged Luciferian, was doing. She was exposing everybody based on what she had available. Now she did have something called the 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 Lu, uh, Lucifer magazine, but in this capture a screen capture of a site, she says, "We are about to found a, a magazine of our own, Lucifer." Don't allow yourself to be frightened. It is not the devil into which the Catholics have falsified the name of the morning star, sacred to all the ancient world of the, of the bringer of light, Phosphorus, as the Romans often called the mother of God and Christ. And in St. John's Revelation, does it not say, I, Jesus, the morning star? I wish people would take this to mind at least, it is possible that the rebellious angel was called Lucifer before his fall, but after his transformation, he must not be called so. H.P. End quote. H.P. Blavatsky in a letter to her sister Vera. Okay. Now it goes on, and she this is quote: "Open your columns to to free and fearless discussion." Do as the theosophical periodicals have ever done, and as Lucifer is now preparing to do. The bright sun of the morning fares no light, he courts it, and is prepared to publish any inimical contributions couched, of course, in decent language. However, much at variance with, the, with his theosophical views, he is determined to give a fair hearing in any and every case to both contending powers and allow things and thoughts to be judged on their respective merits for why or what should one dread when fact and truth are one's only aim, H, end quote, H.P. Blavatsky. Now they also had, they used to call matches Lucifers in the 1800s. Okay, um, basically I don't need your religions. 
I don't need your occultism. I don't need your Lucifer. I don't need your your uh, your synagogues, your churches, um, or your mosques. Because all you guys are liars. I don't care what side you take. If you don't tell the entire truth and the nature of these beings, whether they were tall humanoid or faking it and they're really gray aliens under the ground and they just put on some kind of human meat suit to, to come out and interact with people, whatever it is. In this day and age, if you're not putting the whole thing on the table, you are just as much of a fraud and I don't take any of your sides. I'm not interested in any of your rituals or your, you know, whatever the heck you do. I'm not interested in any, taking any of your oaths any of it. But until you come out, all of you, and start telling the truth, you're all guilty. That's it. So we're going to move on now to H.P. Blavatsky's book, The Secret Doctrine, where she talks about seven races. And we're going to get into the nature of uh, alleged previous races that were not human and that the, the human race of today, which is termed Aryan, and by the way, Aryan doesn't mean just white. It can black, brown, yellow, white. It's all the people. That's what that term is, is refers to, and you're going to see that. So we're going to discuss that. And then I'm going to move on to discussing other esoteric researchers and occultists. And you're going to see that, um, you know, Blavatsky started to write about these seven races. Four have already come. We're the fifth. Two more to come. And her successor, which would be uh, Basant, who um, also worked with the gentleman, kind of expanded on it. And then the Baileys, Alice Bailey and Foster Bailey, came in and they tried to expand on it, but they were kicked out of the Theosophical Society. And then I'm going to talk about some of these other occultists like Rorick and John D and Alistair Crowley, Aunt Ella Richard Cavendish, and Albert Pike. And we're going to get a good idea of what these people were doing. And, um, and then I want to do a comparison of the Semitic description of God and his physical characteristics and the angels' physical characteristics versus the um, historical descriptions and mythology. And so maybe we could start putting this together. But as I said, if you're going to sit here and choose a side and not tell the entire truth to the public, you're the enemy. You um, are doing just as bad as the opposition you claim um, is, is evil. So that's it um, for how Helen Blavatsky um, started to expose the Jesuits and the Catholic Church. Thank you.